develop. Um, how do you move forward in the world without destroying it? So <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I'm Lena. I've lived in LFC about 10 years now, and I'm a biologist. I work at the University of Washington on a Bothell campus and have two kids um, that I worry about. I um, feel like their childhood is really, really different from mine, and um, I can only see it just getting harder for them and work on. So that really motivates me. And right now I'm really thinking about uh, September, which is often time of snow. I know that's kind of a pessimistic look, but I've gotten more and more worried about end of summer. Well, I'm no. sorry about that. That's right. <laughs> I have a little happy talk. I'm yeah, happy yeah. you guys. <laughs> I'm thinking about that number. It said it was 37% to 43%, which was what the, they thought the impact of this, of the climate, um, the, what is it, the Inflation Reduction Act climate piece would do in terms of moving us towards 2030, that there was enough in there that it would make a difference. So that made me. Do you want to play, Tracy? Sure. <laughs> so. Hi, uh, my name is Tracy Kurutani. I'm the lead zone from city council to this committee. And uh, so I you here today. Yep. So thanks for stepping up. And uh, um, I guess they see a lot of lines of what Sarah said. Um, um, I've been trying to figure out what sources of funding are within that bill that we can tap yeah. into. And I think uh, one of the things that may lead to is supercharger stations, which would be kind of a neat thing, especially in areas that are underserved by those right now. Town center is kind of out of the spot, but not everybody lives near town center. So if we can get some around the periphery of the city, that would be great. And I know that there are some very preliminary talks going on with the other four North End cities about basically maybe having a standard and having a sort of a network amongst them, which would be kind of interesting. So stay tuned. Yeah. Um, we sent out the minutes to the June and July. Oh, Brian. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, boy. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm Brian Saunders. Uh, I'm a resident here in Lake Forest Park, obviously. And uh, I teach at the uh, Shoreline in North, North Seattle College uh, in biology and environmental science and oceanography. I'm also um, a board member of the LFP Stewardship Foundation. And uh, I'm also on the uh, water district board, the, the, uh, the advisory committee for that too. So I guess the forefront on my mind is, uh, yeah, just how, uh, how, our, how our creeks and streams are going to survive these next 10, 15, 20 years. I think it's gonna be a rough, a rough 20 years. And uh, as they continue to, we continue to develop around them, we continue to, uh, take away the the shade um yeah it's going to be uh it's going to be interesting it's a it's a fabulous group of people <laughs> and it's going to be great when we can all get together and be in the same room and have a good time <laughs> well you oh oh sorry i can't i keep trying to move on but there's one more person <laughs> Corey Rose. Uh, City Lake Forest Park. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. I did a webinar on the Twitter control and just asked a, it's a lot bigger problem than people think. It's been on my mind. <laughs> okay. All right. I think that's going to be the But agenda approved. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Is there any objection to the uh, agenda? Okay, no. The, uh, are the, is there any objection to adopting the minutes for June and July? No. 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 James Bray. Good. My name's Phil Bray. I'm so right. Okay. Okay. Do we have citizen comments? Do you want to say something? Okay. Are there others? There's no one online. Okay. 
Okay, so this is where I think we are. This is our fourth meeting, I think, might be our fifth, and we've been tasked with preparing a draft climate action plan to get feedback from uh, our community and then to present it to the council for approval. And once they have, you know, tinkered with it and approved it, then we're, our charge shifts to implementation. So we have sort of these two, uh, two sort of separate jobs. Uh, the better we do the first one, the easier the second will be, I think. Maybe, but I don't like that, you know, laughing at that, but, um, and that uh, we had had some, um, we sort of, we're trying to figure out how to do this job, and at one point, Tracy said to me, well, it'll just happen, we'll just figure it out as we go along, because you know, that's a pretty scary thing, and then we found the 2008 um, climate action plan that the city had done, um, and uh, last meeting, Dana and Brian, presented uh, sort of a summary of what went on in that. So we would use that as sort of our jumping off. And um, Dana sort of presented what was the content of it. And um, Brian gave us a strategy for moving ahead um, in terms of how we could use that piece of information and jump off. And he had sort of three categories of things that people were working on. And we broke up into groups. And so we have, I believe, the communications that Tamara is going to report for um, the communications committee on a survey. Uh, that Jessica is going to talk about some action plans, um, and then we have some, uh, I think, other data reports that people had. Uh, I have Linda that you're going to talk about the Burke Dillon Trail trees. Is that correct? Well. <laughs> it's <laughs> news to me. Okay, I'm taking that off the uh, list. <laughs> so if we'll just, uh, whatever data we have, we'll talk about it. And I'll then I, I can share what we have organized right now. Okay, so Anne's going to talk about what they've organized so far. And then <clears> I'm just going to give a report on where what other things we've done, which includes outreach to other commissions. Um, some uh, and, and the web uh, draft of a web page. Um, and then we want to get some um, input on what we should, what sort of the next steps are. How do we do, um, how do we develop frequently asked questions for the web page? How do we figure out how to get a good list in order to get people subscribing to our newsletters? And, um, and also, uh, instead of going piecemeal to the city saying, we need to know how many electric vehicles are in town and how many of this and how many of that, that would be helpful to brainstorm one list. So we have one, well, there probably won't be one, but it will be our first attempt at what we need, what data we need from the city. And if we could brainstorm that, I think it'd be helpful to sort of get them started on that. Um, and then we'll look at our next, um, our next, our schedule and our next, um, Steps. So that's that's how I fleshed out the agenda. So any anybody want to? You know, this is very informal. You have a profound and important idea. Just jump in. Okay. Uh, so Tamara, you're on. Do you have, right. do you have do you need to share your uh, or do you want? I was going to ask you. Do you want to pull up the? Uh, survey, or do you want me to share my screen and pull it up? Whatever you want. Do you have access to share your screen? Okay. Let me. Okay. So maybe you could, while you're sharing it, create a little context for what this survey is intended to do. Okay. Yeah. So we have this survey. So I think if I. Well, by going through it, it kind of helps to uh, explain what it is that we are trying to do. Um, okay. Do you have access to share your screen? Um, I do, it's asking me to... Apparently, I don't have the right settings here. Okay. 
we lived here for about a year and a half now. Uh, East Lake, most most recently. Oh, I'm from Michigan. Oh, okay. Okay, Do you want us to go on to somebody else while we get this set up or are we good or? Um, let's see. I think I might be good. Oh, good. Okay. All right. So I think you can see my screen. Yep. Okay. All right. So we have kind of an introduction. So first we have the logo, but I was thinking we could use the banner kind of that we created as the logo uh, minus like the QR code and everything else on it. Mm -hmm. And then just a really short introduction to who we are. And and asking people for feedback. So the first question uh, is like an kind of an introductory question. So it just talks about how the release of carbon dioxide is a leading cause, how what our community can utilize these strategies. And then we're asking people to circle the number that represents how they think we should prioritize each strategy. Uh, so we have transitioning to non-fossil fuel transportation, electrifying all infrastructure and appliances and homes and businesses, uh, significantly reducing community waste, and then an option for people to write in something else. And then also another box just for people in case they do not feel that they can answer that question. And so the purpose of this question is just to gauge which areas are most important to the people within our city. So we know which ones to focus on. And I guess before I go, did anyone have any questions on the first question or suggestions or comments to make it better? Tracy? Yeah, thanks Tamara for working on this. Um, having made surveys like this prior, um, one of the things that I might suggest is because people always get one through five screwed up, you know, they always switch high for low and low for high. I've taken mm -hmm. to just write the word high, write the word low, or write the word middle. Maybe don't even give them the middle choice, just say high or low. It depends how granular we want to go with this, right? So that's that's, that's my recommendation is just basically make it um, more user friendly in that way. Wow. Oh, okay. Uh, Anne? Yeah, um, when we've been doing our internal review, one of the largest uses of electric of, of energy in our community, you, you've correctly identified transportation, of course, but um, home heating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have that in uh, like infrastructure and appliances in homes and businesses. So, okay, I so I'm reasonably familiar with it and. Uh, I'm struggling to go from electrifying all infrastructure to um, eliminating fossil fuel use in home heating. Okay. So that's that's a part of it is, so they're, they're the two aspects also. The first aspect is getting rid of the carbon input, which is the fossil fuels because Seattle City Light, although they do have a small amount of fossil fuel in their mix of fuel sources is, is primarily hydropower. Uh, and so what we're really focusing on here is first eliminating the fossil fuels 
And then if people want to reduce their electric bill or use electricity, less electricity, that's almost a separate issue. Well, it's not um, reducing, so it's electrifying. So it was, it's essentially saying to eliminate the fossil fuels. In um, the Kenmore plan, they word it, I don't know if this helps or not, but I have it in front of me, so I thought I'd read it. It says, upgrade to electric energy efficient appliances and heat pumps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I like the wording in that because first off, upgrade sounds positive. Yeah. It sounds like you're improving things. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's focusing on converting to electric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, uh, uh, Dave. So I'm wondering, is this to rank the these? three things in order, or could people say five on all of them, or one, whatever the greatest priority is? And if they did, then um, you get something out of that? Well, I was you know, thinking about that, and if we rank them, I think it, I think it makes it hard, because what if they have if there's two items that are both equally important and then there's something else that's just not as important. So I think it kind of skews how important they think each issue is. So they could think, you know, all of them are really important or all of them aren't very important. I think it takes away from the individual importance of each if you force a ranking. So you're not forcing a ranking. We could do five on all of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But it's not clear. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we could do uh, like Tracy's suggestion of, um, you know, instead of just say high, you know, priority, low priority, uh, and then something in the middle. I like that, like high, medium, low. I think that that, yeah. I think it's clearer and I agree that like one through five is kind of a lot. I feel like when you give people one through five, you're always going to get like the middles. Like people, no one's going to want to choose one or five. You're always going to get like two and four or something, which yeah. maybe muddies the water. So, um. Um, sorry, just to go back to the the wording of the second part, mm -hmm. I I kind of like the idea of emulating the first part where it says transitioning to non fossil fuel. Um, because I think what everybody's talking about with electrifying, you know, using the word electrifying, I understand that's like causing some confusion, but even like upgrading to electric, like it's assuming that the person reading it understands that, oh, if I have like a natural gas heater, that's fossil. Like it seems kind of obvious, but like some people aren't gonna aren't gonna realize that like, oh, switching to electric reduces my carbon footprint in that specific way. And I think that using that wording from the first phrase of transitioning to non-fossil fuel. And then you, you can kind of in brackets, like you have like, you know, for example, heat pumps, appliances, et cetera. Okay. And I was thinking too, like I wanted to encompass um, like different, like yard work appliances also. Do you think it's specific enough in there also, or should we? call it, I mean, just, I was thinking like some way, like everything that we utilize, right, in our homes. That is a great idea. I see a lot of my neighbors using gas lawnmowers. And they're like, oh, you can borrow my gas lawnmower. I'm like, no, I, I'd rather get an electric lawn or, or gas blowers. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where I think, I like Matt's idea that if you did the transition to electric, and then we need some like two general words and then you can do the parentheses, right? And you can add these specifics in the parentheses, heat pumps, you know, lawn mowers, blower, you know, you could add some really specifics there. Um, so we need those, maybe those two general two, I mean, so it's transition to electric energy and I mean, appliances, but I, I guess I don't think of appliances as being, you know, you could do appliances and equipment or like even everyday household items. Oh yeah. 
because a lot of people do have if, if whenever I had natural gas in my house the gas stove was actually the high point of the whole thing mm -hmm. so you know if we had gas heat we also had gas hot water and gas um, stove as a, a collection Does that give you enough to work with, Tamara? Yeah, I have a, right now, something like transition to non-fossil fuels in homes and businesses, and then parentheses, appliances, heating, <clears throat> cooling, lawn, something to encompass that too. Okay. One more question here, Dana. Uh, another question, that is, it seems like this is focused on individual behaviors at home or businesses. Is this also thinking about the town of Lake Forestburg, are you going to get to that maybe in the rest of the, like another focus would be, you know, having the town focusing in on themselves to do this kind of thing. And I think transportation, yeah, transportation would encompass, I think city transportation, but for the second one, we could add another line like homes, businesses, and like municipal properties. I'm just wondering if people are going to feel like it's a kind of a targeted thing, like how are we going to change people in Lake Forest Park? I mean, these are, they're fairly, I mean, that's kind of the goal though. I don't know, is that the goal? Of, I would say one of my big goals for this would be, um, protecting people from what's going to happen, which I think in some ways, in my mind, it's more important than, I mean, of course you, is that further down? There's mitigation down there. And, uh, what, is there a good question? I can't remember. Yeah. I uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a good idea. Let's go through the whole thing and then come back. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. okay. So. Um, so the next question, what are you currently doing to minimize your contribution to climate change? And the related question, if money was not an issue, what would you be doing to minimize your contribution to climate change? Is there anything else besides money holding you back? So I think it, what I like about these questions is the first one will say like, here are the things that I'm doing. And then the next question is, well, here are the things that I want to do. Um, Cause I think Right. There could be a lot of people who want to buy electric cars, but they don't want to spend the money to buy electric cars or they want to convert to heat pumps or they have, they know what it is that, that they should do, but they're not doing it. Um, and so I think it's important to know why they aren't doing those things. So what is it you're currently doing and what essentially would you like to be doing? Hey, Tamara, so are we, are you thinking that this is going to be an online and a printed, right? Both? Is that right? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, and I'm curious about the, the thought process that went into just doing the one, well, a couple of multiple choice and then the several open-ended. Uh, so it's just for some of these questions where, so for the multiple choice, we thought that it would be it could be difficult for people to think of answers. They might not know off the top of their head or it might be uh, harder to kind of put them into categories for those that we want more specific categories. And for some of these other ones, we want more of an open-ended answer. I haven't done a lot of surveys. I'm going to be totally honest about that. So I don't know if other people have, like Tracy's mentioned, he did. and. If do you think that we're going to get a lot of responses with so many open ended questions? Um, I mean, Ken Moore's experience with Ken Moore's experience with uh, this kind of survey was actually astoundingly good. Um, they uh, and I have not audited these numbers, but they claim they got about uh, fifty percent of their people to send it back. Which is, what? I don't think that many people vote. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so so take it with a grain of salt. But they were very pleased with their survey. 
Did they have open-ended questions? Or? Yeah, I mean, this is very much based here. It's the same style. Great. Awesome. What did it do with you? You know, I haven't got uh, that deep. I just basically have new type of support. I think it might be good to talk to some of these other towns that have done a survey and see what would they have changed mm -hmm. from their survey? What, how do these surveys work and what did they tell you? Like there, this is a whole huge subject writing a survey mm -hmm. and you can get. Mm -hmm. so I think there's a lot of nuance on these things. Yeah. Asking, like, asking pointed questions, I think it's a really good thing being very specific because you only get that answer back, but then it might be leading. I mean, there's so many um, pros and cons and pluses and minuses. It just seems like using other people about that so experience. Would it be helpful to? We found out who ran the surveys in Kenmore and Shoreline, for example. We got those to you, Cameron. Sure. Yeah. So then my other question is, I like the, I mean, I like uh, really all the questions. Um, so we're using climate change, contribution to climate change, instead of like, you know, greenhouse gas emissions. Did you guys talk about that? And and that the choice of, of doing it in that one bucket versus the other bucket? We didn't. Um, what is everyone's thoughts on the terminology that we use? We're using the plain language is definitely faster. So climate change, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I do worry that like two and three are similar to like four. Like, what are you doing to minimize versus what are you doing to mitigate? Like, I think you're going to get some of the same answers. Yeah. I, I think it might be just to find mitigate or the effects of climate change to be specific about. Yeah, maybe something like, what are you doing to prepare for? Okay. That might make it more fair to people. Yeah, I think people, mitigation is going to have a lot of different interpretations to it. Okay. I do think that, again, I'm not a survey expert, but, you know, having, um, you know, maybe some multiple choices in, in questions two and three, like one, it does people who are reading the survey and have no idea what they could do, like they're going to learn something just by looking at like, oh, you know, driving less or switching to electric, you give them like A, B, C, and D, and then you have like E is other, like right in your own. And so you can kind of get both, you know, people putting in their open-ended answer, but like you make it a little bit easier to, to analyze and also put some ideas in people's heads. Okay. The easier to analyze is a big piece. <laughs> if you're having all these open uh, all these open-ended questions, that's hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What are the answers going to be? Yeah. I, I feel like it would be a lot more engaging if it had some part about like what uh, changes you would want to see at the local government level so that it feels like not just like asking them what they're doing and sort of like, you know, kind of feels like it's intended to make people reflect on their own behavior and more like, what do I want the local government to do about this? You know, like ban this, ban that, ban that, like which of these things would you like to see the local government do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, a good question. Yeah. Our, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it sounds to me like Tamara, we're gonna ask your the committee to take a second run at this. Is that okay. what I heard? Uh, and it we're gonna you might want to join this committee just saying that. Uh, <laughs> right, so, so, uh, some um I think our notion was that this was sort of a preliminary, uh, this was a, a, a preliminary survey. And at some point we would do something much more rigorous. I mean, not more rigorous, more detail. detail. And well, this was just sort of raising the issue and seeing what take, we were taking the temperature of our community. Is that correct? Well, I think we had, I mean, we had looked at some of the more in-depth surveys and 
we weren't really sure what the purpose of some a lot of those questions were. Um, it some of the other surveys it just didn't seem like we'd get a lot of value from people's answers to more in depth questions. Um, so I think to go back so for so we could change the wording kind of of three and five and then for two, three, four, and five, add some multiple choice plus like a write-in. And then for six, we have, you know, in what ways have you personally experienced the effects of climate change? And then you have a place for other comments. Uh, but I like the idea, you know, of also adding something like what, what do you want your local government to do? to help fight climate change. Um, but I think it's important to add like in other comments here in case there's something else where people want to tell us. Or even like, uh, what kind of education can we help? What do they want to learn more about? Hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, in six, I would add something about either flooding, changes in water levels, something related to water. Um, we actually were, I was, we were talking about this, whether I'm not sure if like Forest Park is still having, there are areas that are still having flooding issues after the Lions Creek um, restoration or not, but um, that's something it, that could be coming up adjacent to small creeks for folks. Um, or if they live on the lake, it could be like low water levels. They could be experiencing low water levels on the lake. Um, so those, that's just something that I think we should find, it would be good to find out about, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had, we did have that question like that in there at one point. You could just add it to six though as one of mm -hmm. those, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, Tracy. Um, so can I take a couple minutes to do a little thought experiment? Okay. Uh, I'll try, I'll try. Okay. <laughs> I just want to honor people's yeah, time. I absolutely okay. do. And, um, so then here's, here's basically why I asked this question. Um, City of Kenmore did a phase one engagement uh, survey, which was basically at the beginning of their process. And they got back these key findings. Kenmore's emission reduction targets should align with King County. Flooding continues to remain the biggest challenge and climate concern. A future Kenmore should be safe, walkable, green, and equitable. The city should engage in meaningful public climate change education. Future development should be slowed and prioritize equity and climate considerations and Cost and inconvenience are the biggest barriers facing households from taking climate action. Is that the level we want to drill down to, or is that too specific? What I want to know is basically, you know, th th that's what should drive our survey. It's basically how 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 drill deep do we want to go? Right. I think that to that level. So what are you looking at, Tracy? I am looking at little in the City of Kenmore's Climate Action Plan page, which uh, lays out their timeline as well as basically the instrument they use. Uh, unfortunately, they use SurveyMonkey for this particular survey, so I can't get at it. It's closed. But I can basically go over and talk to, I think it's uh, Deborah Srebnik, that's her name, that's basically the uh, council person that was working on this. And um, I can probably basically get what the words on that survey were, if that's helpful to me. What are the chances of getting them to come here and discuss it? So maybe getting those, writing up something, and then asking them pointed questions about what would you do if you were rewriting the survey at the stage that we're at? Never, never hurts to ask. If you guys want to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, to that point, I think it would be helpful to talk to Kenmore and Shoreline just in, in general, not just the survey, but the climate action plan and everything. Like if you were in our shoes now, you know, with hindsight being 2020, what advice do you have for us? Yeah. Not so, just about the survey. Yeah. yeah. Corey was saying she thinks that's an office hour time event. Is that right? Well, okay. I mean, to get like their, yeah, if someone wants to call them, I'm sure that they'd be more than willing during office time. I don't know if they'd be willing to come. Like the meeting right now, but okay. if, well, if it's if it's one of the uh, the residents that was on serving on the committee, they won't they probably do it. You know, probably would rather have it not office hours. So okay, let's just feel that out. I, from my experience, I called them many times. They 
Yeah, both Shoreline and uh, Kenmore, and they've always been very responsive. So I want to be attentive to people's, um, to all of the groups and the time, and that Jessica's going to leave. Those are all the things I'm thinking about. Um, do you have enough information, Tamara? Um, I just have a couple, just two more. So the oh, next okay. one is a uh, demographic information. Uh -huh. And then just in a short explanation, you know, we think this information will help us understand concerns, priorities of different people. So I think it'd be interesting to know if there's difference by age, you know, um, the gender identity of people filling out the survey and their address in different locations. You know, if a lot of people by the lake are more concerned about the water level um, that we would expect. Mm -hmm. um, anyone have any questions or comments on this part. Um, and then would you like to join the Climate Action commu Committee's future mailing list? Please provide your email so we can get people on it. Mm -hmm. I think that's fine. So we never ask them their name? I don't know. Well. Guess we got their email. We could figure out who they were. <laughs> yeah. we really want people's I name. I don't know. Option and that could be there. Uh, no, it's not necessary. Okay, think about that. All right. Are there great ladies? first effort? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not easy. No <laughs> survey <laughs> during okay. okay, Jessica, did you want to take a run? You sure. She also gave permission to share. Mm. Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, I don't have it in presentation mode, but I think you guys can all see that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Brian had suggested a framework for the actions group um, to think about greenhouse gas reductions are we current that we are currently doing and can then construct a framework for recommended actions and then list recommended actions. So what we did is we started with Ken Moore's climate action plan because it's actually pretty well written and easy to follow. And we went through it and looked at things and then we got rid of things we didn't think that applied and brainstormed to see what other things we thought should be added. We highlighted things in green that we believe um, are currently happening in Lake Forest Park. And then things that we just don't really, we're not sure, we highlighted in yellow. So this is sort of our first um, pass at this. And the way that the Kenmore one is laid out is that they have this like summary graphic for residents. And then they have each one of these same categories with a lot more detail that's supposed to be more focused like from the city out to residents, but you'll see there's there's a lot of overlap. Um, so we sent this out, so I don't know if people had a chance to look at it or not, but um, so the first category was the municipal buildings and energy. I know we don't have time to walk through any every one of these, but maybe I'll just focus on the things like that we removed and, and some of these things that we sort of had questions about. Um, so use less energy. One of the things was to go above and beyond the Washington State Energy Code. And Sarah had mentioned that there's a Washington Reach Code. But I don't, we don't, none of us have any know anything specifically about what that entails. I don't know if anybody else on the committee does, has any familiarity with that. No. Okay. Um, on cleaner energy sources, there was a number of things about solar energy and based on some of our, the other discussions, um, we've removed solar energy since, you know, the, the electricity that we receive in Lake Forest Park is actually already pretty clean. I don't know if, does anyone feel strongly that we should not remove um, the options to incentivize or to look at solar energy. Okay. Nope. Why, why remove it though? Um, because it's not gonna make a difference in terms of the greenhouse gas emissions for the city of Lake Forest Park. 
what's the time scale that you're thinking about for that? Because like further on down the road, that might solar might play a role in things if there's you know issues with electrical systems. Um, uh, I mean, it's possible. That's that is true, um, you know. And I guess one thing that I brought up was like backups to electric. Like one of the things under these cleaner energy sources too is to make sure that we have, you know, reliability in the electrical grid. We lose <laughs> power all the time, um, so we have a propane tank as a backup for our generator. I suppose that there are other ways to do that potentially with solar. Um, so. I don't know. One other thing just to consider with the hydroelectric power that we use, you know, um, some of the tribes, you know, have protested mm. dams in certain locations. Um, so there's, you know, always that issue as well. So what I'm hearing is maybe we should leave solar energy in, but maybe we need to just come up with a way that, I don't know if it's like a, secondary, it's a lower recommendation. Um, you know, they don't, they don't differentiate, I think, really in terms of priorities um, in the Kenmore plan. They just like under cleaner energy sources, you know, they'll have four or five things or something. They don't rank them necessarily. So that would be something that we could consider is that we could have them sort of in an order of priority. And so maybe we leave solar in, but we have it have these things prioritized? I think that's a good idea. Okay. You know, before I forget. Are we watching your type? <laughs> you are. Sorry, I just okay, had to just check it again. <laughs> um, and then, oh, I, so one thing we had down here that again I kind of brought up was, you know, if people want backups to electric, mm -hmm. you know, is there a recommendation for propane? I don't know. Does anyone know if propane is better? Is how much better it is than than LNG? No. It's pure. That's what I found out. Pure and burns the cleaner. burns cleaner, but it's still not the best. Burns right. In terms of right. particles, yeah, but not it's a, not going to reduce. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, Danny. Can you say that louder? It's not going to reduce. I was just, but sorry, I was just thinking it was uh, cleaner in terms of particulates in the air rather than cleaner in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, mm -hmm. which is, I guess, good. It seems like there should be a better way to come back up to electricity. Right. Yeah. So, and again, I just, I know it's a personal issue for me. We run my entire business of eight people out of my house and if everything, all the servers and everything sit here. So if, when we lose power, it's a big deal. So that's why we have a propane generator backup, but I would love to have something other than that, but yeah, so. Um, but I think okay. there's alternative resources, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. yeah. yeah, I think yeah. there's more and more generator backups coming into use these days. I know most of my neighbors seem to have or generator yeah. backups, which I never really yeah. considered five or six years ago. Okay. Um, so that's those are the those are the high level things under municipal buildings and energy. Is there anything? I guess again, I don't in the interest of time. I guess if people we should read through this, and then if you have things in addition to it that aren't on here, feel free to email them to me. Um, and you can feel free to the Sarah sent out this PowerPoint. So if you want to even just add them on here and highlight them with a color and let me know what color it is or something, that works too. Um, so then we talked about transportation and land use. 
And um, one of the things that we we think um, that that was that was in the Kenmore plan, which I don't know how much it really um, is going to help with greenhouse gas emissions, but to evaluate the development code related to landslide and flooding hazards. So it's more about being resilient, you know, to climate change than it is greenhouse gas emissions specifically. Um, mm -hmm. And then there was a suggestion in the Kenmore too about environmental justice criteria, incorporating environmental justice criteria into land use decisions. So this is something that Sarah felt like we should talk about because um, I know that it's that's it's challenging, and you know, Lake Forest Park is a fairly affluent community too. Um, so you know, how would that work, and is it something? Um, and, and also, I guess that a lot of the areas in Lake Forest Park that might be most heavily affected by climate change might be some of the wealthier areas, too. I think we should absolutely include it in there, especially if somewhere down the road we, you know, we talk about subsidies for people to change out. I think it should definitely be based on a need based scale. Just to, just to kind of add, if I can, um, at the tree board meeting last week, they had a real interesting graph of Lake Forest Park showing where all the trees are. And it really looks pretty amazing that um, there's a, a large vacancy of trees in areas that are probably less, less, less affluent, less wealthy, um, especially up in sort of our north, um, northeastern end with all the, you know, the, the major um, uh, higher, de higher density, higher density, density, exactly high density stuff. So, so there, there is some issues there. There is a lot of issues to bring up. Right. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any comments about the environmental justice piece? Okay. Um. And then let's see, and then the rest is all about, then there was a drive less. So, so I have these big, so just how this is organized, there's these topical, there's the main category and then there's under each one, again, this is coming from Ken Moore and we can restructure this, but this is just a starting point. Then there's these two subcategories and then bullet points under each one of those. Um, and some of we we did add you know some things to it um, here and there. But. So then the next one was consumption and materials management, and I know that this is something that was left out of the LFP. Um, the, the was that two thousand eight LFP plan. So um, something good to to have in here. Um, so supporting sustainable local food economy, which you know we feel like is certainly being done in Lake Forest Park um, with our wonderful farmers market. Um, but we also raised the idea of, you know, maybe having workshops on growing your own food so that, you know, people weren't reliant just on the farmers market, but they could do their own garden. So I love that idea. Um, and then the strength and construction demolition diversion requirements, we don't know what currently is required or if it's a requirement of the city or not, it might be county based. So that's just kind of a highlighted that we need to look into that more if we're going to include it. Um, do we know if there's been a there's a baseline waste audit we think have that's been done data team? We have some baseline numbers. Okay because there was two categories one was prevent waste and then the second one which this is under is to, in terms of diverting resources from landfills specifically. So if we are looking at diverting resources, we would want to understand, you know, what the baseline waste currently is. Um, and one of the things that came up under that was the a mandate for recycling and composting. Um, and, you know, so we thought about things like if we're messaging this out smaller, you can get a smaller trash can if you're composting more. Composting bins are, you know, free um, and they're different size trash cans, for example. Um, and, but Sarah also raised that 
not very successful right now, the community location. So that's not something else for us to think about is maybe um, trying to help in terms of town center and maybe getting a high school. I had suggested, I know that Shoreline high school students are always looking for community service hours. So, you know, you could have them hang out at the commons and explain to people what goes in which trash van and um, do some, so that's something kind of back to the community, the outreach communication group, some ideas that um, could maybe come out of this. And I should mention that in Ken Moore's plan under almost every category, they had some outreach piece. I didn't detail that here because I know that we'll be doing outreach on a lot of, you know, things. So I figured that was a second layer that could, you guys, the, that other the other committee could work on or we could work on together um because there is also like the education on what is recyclable and can lead to preventing waste um and then it was natural systems and water resources so managing stormwater which is something that lsp you know certainly um has has a fairly good handle on um minimizing flooding so this is where i said it is I'm not sure how big of a problem flooding is these days. I haven't heard anything about it since Lions Creek restoration has happened. So maybe it's fairly well handled, but something to check in with the city about. Um, Tracy, yeah. So you may want to talk to um, Andrew Sylvia, who's the project manager in the city. He's uh, just completed the uh, NDP and the MPDES, which is the stormwater um, plan. And he would have a really good idea of basically whether or not flooding is a problem. Okay, great. And Sarah was asking me what I knew about Lake Washington in terms of climate change impacts, you know, because it, the, it's a managed water level, right? So the water levels aren't gonna go up in, lake, in um, the lake, but what I did bring up is that I think that with the increased heat, low water could be an issue because we can't add, <laughs> we don't control the adding of water to the lake as well as we control the, the outflow of it. Um, and so we could be seeing things like people are going to want to extend their docks, which is going to have a Im big impact on habitat. Again, sort of a resiliency piece more than anything else. Um, so I'll do some, a little bit more research on, on through the UW, UW Climate Impacts Group, I know has something about uh, impacts on the lake, but I haven't read it in a while. So, um, and then under natural systems, so restoring natural systems, preserving natural systems. So I know that, you know, there's been culvert removals and upgrades and there's plans to do more. I mean, they're mandated to do that through Washtot anyway, to make them fish passable and um, WDFW controls all of that. So, and then Sarah brought up the legacy project, which is the hundred year plan for the natural systems. And I don't know, we have it highlighted because we need to figure out what that entails and how that would fit into this. Jessica, I have that plan. Okay. So you're gonna, and that's right. Linda was gonna look through this and oh, yeah. summarize it for us and see what might be applicable. Oh. Um, and Brian, we added carbon sequestration, which is Sarah said was a, um, one of your pet topics to make sure that that was included in here for wetlands and forests, forests. and tree canopy board coordination would come under natural systems. That was good. And then the last one was community resilience and well-being, um, which again is a, you know more of an adaptation kind of piece than a reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. So we have a couple ideas under here. There's, so there's a planning piece and then a specific actions piece. Do we know, is there been an air quality evaluation for LFP? We have an air quality station. Say so again, there's a what? Air quality station at City Hall. Yes, the clean air, the yeah. clean air agency has yeah. a uh, air quality evaluation. They do it in a couple of places in Lake Forest Park. Or Lake Forest Park specifically. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's something that we already have then. That's that's already being done. Okay. So the things that are already being done, we probably would remove or we'd want to make, you know, we will reword as a sort of like, you know, continue doing as opposed to a an action. Um and then we added some specific actions here under, you know, well-being. 
um, in terms of supporting people um, as the climate change move forward. So that's where we have, that's where we're at. We'd love some feedback. Um, but like I said, I suppose to taking all of our meeting time to do it, if people can read through this or if there's something you heard and you just want to email me about it. Um, and then we'll keep working and then we'll, we'll get, once we have some feedback on these sort of bigger statement topics or if there's things we missed, then we can flush them out in a little bit more detail. Okay, questions? Nope. Thank you. All right. Yes. Um, and so uh, I'm just going to ask, what do you see as your next steps? So um, we get feedback from okay. other folks on the committee on anything that we've missed or um, even if there's something other specific ideas, but then from there, these are kind of more general. So like if we looked you know, at the way that can more some of the other places, there'll be sort of a high level topic, a statement, and then there'll be more specifics about mm -hmm. it. So we would try to start adding some more specifics to these actions. And I think, I guess the other thing that we talked about too, Sarah, was whether, you know, if we liked this format, it's a little bit of mixing of like city and residential actions. And so should we make those more distinct, like have a city specific list and have a, you know, residential specific list, and then maybe have a city influences residential list or something like that? I was thinking that when I was listening to this, I had to look back to see who these actions were for. Um, so I would I would make that clearer somehow or other and figure out who is it that we are making up actions for. And ultimately, the city is working to help the residents. Mm -hmm. So what they can do to help or what we could do to help the government do to help us or whatever is complex but i think it, it should okay. just be on the citizens i don't think yeah and then maybe we should add businesses as well even though we don't have a very large business area it's still separate than residential and city yeah that makes sense Okay, so we'll also work on that into to creating sort of three separate action item um, buckets or lists. Okay, okay. Anne, did you have something you wanted to share? You're muted, Anne. Sorry, um, I, I would like to share the collection spreadsheet that I've been pulling together from all the data that people have shared with me to date and um, just give you a quick overview of everything in it right now and ask for feedback as to, um, you know, for some of the information, for instance, like electricity usage as measured by Seattle City Light, we know where to go for those data. For other issues, um, as we get into it, I'll see some of this is best pulled from our own city council, uh, our own public works department, and the like. Uh, other places we go is, is our um, waste management vendors. So uh, I'm going to just say, I want to apologize in advance, but I'm going to give you 10 minutes. Yep, I'm not going to take more than that, I promise you. Um, what I want to do is go through all the sheets really quickly. So this is gonna be a splash overview and then talk about feedback that I need, uh, right. that the team needs, okay? So with that, I'm gonna start sharing screen. So we've been pulling together, um, now two, there are two sources for a lot of these data. In one case, um, Mark Phillips was able to get some data for us through our, our um, people for climate action group and through city council. In other cases, we have this previous report that was written and I pulled the data from that. So this, um, the old data from 2002, 2007 comes from the existing report. And you can see the what we have for public works only, not for the city is total gallons of fuel used and the price per gallon for those years. Um, what we have from the state 
is uh, we have snapshots in time for types of vehicle, type of ownership, type of fuel. And this granular data is available now and we can get it on an annual basis. I don't know how far back we can get it, but it's extremely helpful and granular. It's also separated, I've color coded this in terms of individual owners and business owners. For solid waste, we have one data point so far, and that is uh, in the 2008 report, I assume they were talking about the 2007 waste management year, the tonnage of uh, waste that was used in the community. In Lake Forest Park, we got these data from Seattle City Light very recently, but when I pull it together into a chart, there's obviously a, a three order of magnitude data value issue that I have not yet sorted out. These early data were from the 2008 report. These Seattle City Light data are from recent data. Obviously, we didn't go from 200,000 and 70, uh, 80,000 to 56 million. So there's a decimal issue here. I'll get it sorted out, but we haven't yet. We do have Puget Sound Energy, electrical and gas power. We've been trying to track down fuel oil, which is something that was not looked at in 2008. Um, and there are still a lot of underground storage tanks. I, I've got one in my front yard. Um, that we're decommissioning, but there it is. And I'm not the only one in the area that has a UST. Uh, so getting some sense of the number of these USTs and the amount of fuel used by them would also be helpful. Uh, City Hall, we've got some nice data. And we also have some data on streetlights here. So, um, this information is available and we're, we're getting it sorted out. We will be getting more information going forward. I think one of the big efforts in years past was to change all of our streetlights uh, to LEDs uh, and, and the low, or sorry, the stoplights to LEDs and the streetlights to low energy usage. So we'll be able to look at those numbers and those data. We can look at, um, at household energy efficiency, in a number of areas, we can look at solar panels and the number of panels. We could look at heat pumps used for household heating and cooling. We can look at uh, electric heat pump hot water heaters, gas heat pump hot water heaters, electric induction cooktops, which is a new but growing field. And there may be other things we can look at in this home household electricity you know, units area. These the solar panels we can find literally by looking on Google Earth. Uh, and we can also look at permits. The uh, other elements, heat pumps, hot water heaters, we'll probably be able to get permit data for those. Cooktops, maybe not. So one of the questions we're trying to ask is what data should we try to track just to get a sense of what our community is doing? But also, can those data be readily tracked using publicly available data, or will, will we be relying on individual households to tell us something? Um, since the second version is unreliable, we'd probably drop data that require personal reporting. Uh, this is another area that may take personal reporting, whether people have gas powered or electric powered uh, yard tools, uh, lawn mowers, leaf blowers, weed whackers, hedge trimmers, chainsaw, or other, but those are the common ones. Then I've got a miscellaneous category, and this is the weird stuff that we can probably measure. Is there uh, any way you can make that a little bigger, Anne? Yes, sorry about that. Let's crank it up to 160 and see if you can still see. Oh, better, thanks. Is that useful? Yeah, so for right. paved roadway, instead of just doing miles, uh, we should also account for lane width and look at it in terms of how many acres of Lake Forest Park is currently covered by pavement by roadway? How many acres do we have as paved parking areas? Um, and we have to think about what we wanna call driveways in that. Um, how many miles of sidewalk do we have? How many miles of trail do we have? How many miles of separated bicycle lane do we have? Um, 
parkland, forest land, wetland, canopy coverage. When we're looking at municipal solid waste, we can look at the landfill component in tons, the yard waste component in tons, and re the recycling component in tons. Hmm. We can probably get a pretty good, because of permit data, we can probably get a pretty good handle on large scale AC units uh, being used either for you know, town center or city hall or um, multifamily housing units, this sort of thing. Uh, we will be able to get a decent handle on commercial coolers and chillers, uh, backup generators, gasoline, diesel, and propane fuel types. We know we have them all through the city. It'd be nice to get a, for some cases, we will not be able, like we would never pick up Jessica's most likely, but we will pick up the ones at the fire department and the police department and city hall. Uh, so these are the sorts of things that we could probably put numbers on and track and see what's going on with usage of these devices over time. Um, whether we choose to and how we choose to will be one of the big considerations for data because uh, just because data can be acquired, if it's too painful and not going to be used for anything, then why acquire it? So I'm going to stop sharing. But that's that's the overview. That's kind of the big picture of can we define a baseline and a starting point and then have units that we can look at and say, here's where we're improving or not? Can you translate this into a, or maybe that chart, those charts are enough to something that is a request to the city of those yes. things? Yeah, no, the, and, but I'm pulling it together in charts so that we know what we want to ask, and then we can work with the city to find out what is available as answers. Great. Great. But the, our goal is to minimize the disruption of uh, the city staff with requests by trying to pull all of our requests together. For instance, I, I saw there was a fair amount of overlap. For instance, uh, in Jessica's presentation, how much waste are we discharging each year? And I think we can even get more granular and say not just how much waste, how many tons of waste, but yard waste, recyclable, how's that working? They have that data, sure. And I, I believe that the uh, waste companies will provide those data because that's a part of how they develop their bid for our services. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was talking about, um, and more related, like in Kenmore, they were saying like, do this audit because they were identifying those as like gaps in the data. So that's where we might intersect is if when you guys identify like what the gaps are, then that would be an action item that we'd wanna put on the action mm -hmm. list. And so that's why I was, checking with you. And so if there are things as I'm going through that I'm not clear about that are data related, if we have the data or not, I'll just send you an email with those lists of things. And then um, once you guys get your, your sort of data gaps or once we get the data gaps identified, then those can become action items. So mm. the goal for this meeting here uh, is to ask everybody, what data were you thinking of being useful? What, what did you think might be useful? And I'm, I'm looking at this from two aspects. One aspect obviously is the, what's the actual carbon footprint of the city of Lake Forest Park? That's very, that's the goal. But there's another aspect that I think ties into everything we're doing and that is community spirit. If we can say as a community, we converted so many households from USTs to home heat pumps in the last year. You know, morale building. Tells a story. Tells a story. Good things happening in Lake Forest Park. Lake Forest Park added so many miles of trail, added so many miles of, of separated bike path as opposed to, God help you if you, if you try for a complaint in rush hour. <laughs> Can we try this? Can we say that we will this month collect the get get to Anne any of these uh, data sets that you think the city would have that we would like to have and get that to Anne? And is it 
fair to ask you, Ann, to create that list and send it to the city? Yes, this this month cannot be worse than last month. So I am certainly able to. <laughs> okay, uh, are there any questions or comments on that? Oh, there's a great list, Ann, great, a fabulous set of data, sort of what we have and what we don't. We've got to start on some of it and we know how to improve a lot of it. Yeah. Yep. Sarah, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm just going to say I can make a very brief report on the uh, the Burke Inman Trail tree thing if you have uh, if I have a minute to do that. You have a minute. Go. I'm counting down. <laughs> okay. Um, all the trees that were removed by the city were replaced by King County. I'm sorry. Were replaced. Some of them on the trail and some of them in Horizon View. So everything they, that the county agreed to, they put back. What I want to know if people are interested in is how many of the trees went where, what types of trees went where. Is that something that's, that's helpful to go forward with? I'm interested at some point in time, but not necessarily tonight. Oh, uh, you don't have it tonight, so. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank you. Can you let me share? Yeah, I think you should. Um, okay. I just wanted to say uh, the um, uh, that I went to the tree board, the planning commission, and um, what else? What's the other one? Park board. Park board. Park board. And people are really responsive. Who knew they were happy to see us? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, Linda has asked uh, to sort of be the liaison to the park board. If there are pe people who are interested in going to yet another meeting uh, with the tree, tree board or with um, the planning commission, it would be helpful to have a liaison, but um, mm -hmm. let, me, let me know if that's something of interest to you. You can do it from your home because we can do these uh, um, uh, meetings online. Um, I took the um, the uh, website and built something, just a draft, based on the city's format. So no creativity, no color coding, just what the city did because that was most likely what they would do. So. This is my attempt. I'm just going to go through it really quickly. That there'd be a climate action committee page, and this is a and and over here are the categories we have: the climate newsletter, community action, learn about climate, uh, FAQs, and contact. So that's the first one. Then we have this newsletter that we've been that we have written and not sent out. And we're going to have another one that we've written and not sent out. Sometime we'll send them out, um, but it's just sort of a blah blah blah. Um, uh, here and then we'll archive them. Then we have a community action page where we identify other organizations. I think we have to get the permission uh, to list them, and that there are you know lots of other ways to participate in this. Um, this is the page that Tracy and uh, Linda are creating. It's a um, uh, learn more, but it's a abstract. So they're going to say a link to whatever fabulous thing they find. Um, so they, with, they, little explanation. with a little explanation. Uh, yeah. And then um, we develop a list of frequently asked questions. So as you're talking with folks about the Climate Action Committee, what are the kinds of questions people are asking? And we'll answer them. Um, and then we want to join um, an email list. What we're going to do is create an email list so that we have when we want to do something, we have a whole bunch of people that we can get to. And I have a list of 100 people for its various town meetings from Lake Forest Park. So I'm going to start with that. But I think um, I'm hoping, Brian, you can send it out to your um, the Stewardship Foundation. And if you're in any other organizations, we can send them out that invites people to join a city email. Um, and I put Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, but you know what? I don't know anything about this. Um, but uh, Anna and um, Bella are saying this is what we have to do. So we put them down there, and we'll, I guess we have a, we'll have a Twitter page and a Facebook page, but they're all embedded in the city. So they'll be hard to find. So we have to figure out how to 
use those tools to reach the, uh, the youngest population, right? And, and Corey's working very hard. Okay, um, the I would I'm going to send out a note with a follow up here. I'm, as annoying as those are, saying send to Anne this, send frequently asked questions to me. What organization should we have? Um, because we are on the timeline. Uh, I have another page here. Um, let's see. Our next meeting is scheduled for September 6th. We've had a, sort of a hard time ha having meetings uh, on the days we schedule. So I'm sort of running that up the flagpole. Um, that's the day after Labor Day uh, weekend. I will be out of the country and Anne will be in charge. We good? Sarah, Sarah, you said you're going to be out of the country. Is that right? I am. Yeah, have a so good you, time. You trust us to? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure what you want. I'm hoping the plan will be done when I get back. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Um, so the question about next steps that we want to do. Susan, is, what are, could you stop sharing your screen, please? Oh, yes. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for reminding me. Um, is what I heard for the next steps is that um, the action team is going to take some next steps on, in terms of filling that out. I know the communications team is going to go back and uh, work again on that. And, oh, I did, I'm, I'm sorry. We can put the survey in the page too, where you can just take the survey on the web page. So, um, and we're going to get some more data. I'm not sure where we are in, in the other committees. But wasn't there a, yet another committee that was set up? No. Okay. I think that was it. Well, okay. Linda had the wanted to do the resources, had solicited. <laughs> questions about or I'd solicited people to participate in like putting a list of resources. But Linda, I think that would be part of the web page, right? So is that sort of part of the communications folks? But I don't know. I don't know either. Whatever, yes, it should be part of the wherever website. you think it fits the best where it would be most, you know, available to people that would be what we would do. Okay. Is there a um, plan to invite back the teams that we were thinking of having meet with us while you're gone? But can more people, the oh, drilling like people, yeah. the uh, consultant? Uh, if I'm not consultant, but I was certainly yeah. going to talk to Kent Ward and see what I can find. We're going to see if they can come to our meetings and make a presentation. That would be fabulous. So we'll, we'll do this. Um, I don't know, Anne will do whatever she wants. And so you should, if you have something you want her to do, tell her. Um, so I think it, uh, it'll be, I think having um, Shoreline and Kenmore sort of focus us will be, uh, would be a helpful piece. So, um, all right, is there, I, you know, I feel compelled to get us out here at 8.30. So um, are there, is there anything else that, we need to talk about in terms of moving forward. Well, maybe just let Matt know that. So these committees are all in the yeah. formation. I, yeah, I was just going to ask. Um, I don't know if I want to ask everybody, but yeah, um, what teams need help? We all need help. <laughs> all of us. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I'm only have a conversation, and yeah. I'll call you. Yeah, and we'll that figure good. that out, and then. Um, if any of you all are on teams that want Matt, call me. <laughs> and I'll talk him into it. We'll oh, talk and, about it. Um, I'll update the roster and send it back out. Kevin. Okay. Terrific. Terrific. All right. Um, so you would like questions for the frequently asked questions? Yes. And what kind of questions are you? Uh, my notion is like that. that no, about the about the climate action committee. Oh, right. I mean, what are you, what are you guys doing? Why are you doing it? Um, I don't know. I guess whatever you hear, and you want answers. 
question as well as a question. Well, I'd like to answer. <laughs> you can't do that. It's interesting you're asking me to. Yeah. Well, and we could. I, I thought I'd start a chain that said, here's some frequently asked questions to make an answer. Does that make sense? Okay. Great. So, have a good time this month. <laughs> Enjoy your trip. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. So, oh, Sarah, when are you actually leaving? Like, when are you available through if we wanted to talk, to connect with you before you go? I am going to be in the United States until September and available. So, first of September. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks. Mm -hmm.